Another day, another day to inhale and exhale. What a pleasure that is. What a blessing that is. I am very, very excited about the program we have today. Really, truly excited because it deals with something so precious. Something so precious. And that is a child. The preciousness of Chineke, of children that Chineke bless us with. I am so excited because we have a wonderful young man that's joining us today. But before we do all of that, let me welcome the show's hosts today, as always. Dibi Ochoaja, Yudi Onyoha. No, yeah, guys, yeah. Uh, I woke up this morning. I know what happened. So uh, let me just give you a couple of bars, and that's it. Uh, means doing God's work. Raise That's your right. hands to That's today right. That's and right. forever. We are going to continue to do yes, God's yes, yes, work. Yes. Yeah, guys, here to everybody this morning. He say, he say, he say, he say, and then let me bring in the one and the only Divya Chief dossier. Oh, yes, Imale. Divya Chief dossier is the original. <laughs> people, people don't know it though, but he is the original greatest African alive. Divya, we don't see your, we're not, we just seen half your face. I had an Afuzi Afuzi. There you go, now you're talking. Uh, hey, the original at Jagirido. <laughs> <laughs> And now let me <laughs> hey. how are you? Great, great, great. Welcome. We have a wonderful show today. Uh it's very important because it deals with the very soul of what we talk about, and that is the need to ensure that our children are prepared for tomorrow. The way we prepare them is not to shower them with material things. The way to prepare them is to help them to identify who they are so that in the committee of other world cultures, they have a say, they have something to say, they have a place. That is the reason why truth is so important. 
That is why it is important that we engage in teaching our children our culture. We are often so consumed with teaching them how to be other people than how to be who they are, how to embrace their own authenticity. We teach them about Easter Bunny, about Santa Claus, about everything but who they are. And in, that, in doing so, somehow our children get lost. They get confused. They don't know who they are. And then when they don't know who they are and they don't perform properly, we wonder why they don't perform well. So why must we teach our children the truth about their culture? This is one of the things that cheese and promotes moral principles through African values. We believe that the gap between globalization, colonialism and values should be filled with African culture, adorned with respect, homebornness, and you know all the numerous forms and ideals that's African to our children. We believe that nurturing the potential of children and the providing them intellectual, personal, emotional, and social up, uh, upgrade, uh, uh, upgradation is so imperative. That's the difference between having a, a child who has confidence and one that is meek is because of lack of surety who they are. Their culture is a vital factor. It's responsible for inculcating moral and ethical values in our children. And yet somehow, somehow we miss that point. Somehow it's more important to us that they know about other people's culture. By teaching them their values, their cultures, they understand the importance of family and how it acts as a support system in their lives. Instead of them trying to get away from their family, instead they want to be with their family. That is what culture teaches them, their heritage. huh? It helps them embrace their heritage and, 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 and so they don't develop insecurity or shame of any kind for being who they are. I saw a video the other day that was so beautiful. This little girl, they were asking her who she was. What was her race? She looked at herself. She says, I'm chocolate. Mm -hmm. They said, what? She says, I'm chocolate. She says, I'm, I, have a rich, I have a rich skin tone and I know who I am. How wonderful it was to see that little, little bitty girl telling people, I am chocolate. I am proud of who I am. That's because of what the family taught him, taught her. You need to look at yourselves as parents. What are you teaching your children? Your children are a reflection of who you are. If they don't know their cultures because you haven't taught them, you can't blame the children. If the children are ashamed of who they are, you look at the parents. Who are the parents? What are they teaching their parents? A child who knows how to be European is not a proud child because somebody has taught him that being European is better than being African. We're not here to knock you, uh, people who are European. That's not the point. We're here to remind you that it's imperative that our children know who they are. And one of the things that respect for elders culture does for our babies is to teach them respect. They learn to respect their elders and continue to uphold their traditions and maintain discipline. And the families, in the families and in the communities, that is why it's important to teach them their culture. And that is why I am so excited about this particular show. Because today we're going to feature a young woman a young man, I beg your pardon, a young man. Chika Sielu, God is greatest. Chika Sielu Mba. This young Nigerian child is committed to projecting the Igbo language, Igbo worldviews, and philosophies to the world. He is so proficient in Igbo and determined to be an inspiration for other children and parents to ensure that the Igbo language and culture are preserved for future generations. This is what it's about. When you have a baby that steps forward and says, hey, I'm proud of who I am. It is not just him, it's his parents. That's what his parents have taught him, that he should be proud of who he is. And that is why it gives me so much pleasure to introduce to you this beautiful, beautiful child and his mother is here with him. So let us please together give a round of applause to this child and here he is. Hello, my darling. Hey, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> wow, he looks so Hello, handsome. How do you do? Good to this see you, baby. Yes. Imani. Okay, we can't. Uh, okay, we have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute your mic. 
Your okay. mic is mute. Okay, there you go. There okay, I'm going to ask my... Okay, that's... It's okay. Chica, see you in the day, Okay, man. The day, Kao. Can you hear us? You marry? You say it, you say it. You say it, you say we are so proud of you. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and then uh, the other guests will ask you something. It's something that is exciting about you. You're from my village. What is your hometown? Yes, yes. Cow, it is it Do you see what I'm saying? His mom yeah. and dad are the ones teaching him how to speak. And he lives in Lagos, so he, he, in Lagos. he gets the benefit of... Before we ask him any more questions, I want him to demonstrate his proficiency in Igbo. So I'm going to ask him to break the colonel. Did you bring your colonel? Or can you do the libations for us? I know you want to... Yes, ma'am. Okay, you want me Wodi. 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 Mma, ope kene ka anyi bubia. Makere kere di kena nko ome reme, ome kozo. As na aga di mwa enko okwara, ndi mwa tonti na ala. Mma anyi na rogi ndo ndo, nka nka. Ndu mi, mma anyi na rogi ndo ndo, nka nka. Makana o chiu ni adi ini izu, i adi eme ya. Anaya haku isi aka, abo ryom. Mma, biko e kwa naka ago ta ahegya. Mba no. I ain't got the catching in it, yeah. They are wow. I'm not too won't On your scene, he sang what an alpha, yeah. Where is he at your ya? On your moy as well, on your zoo, yeah. Call my camera in Tabunko. Call the lady, can you Nandi che. Eh, eh, boy, 
Oh, in there, na na, di karobi. Okay, bo ago. Eh, oh no, bo ma future wara po kaya. Eh, amu 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 zima. Ne na na le mu obi ara to wa lege no abe. Oh, lege lege na na ide lege to wa obi ara to wa lege no abo abe. Ibo ke madu. Nkolo jiwa mwa na kai ba ino. Chine ke gagosi ge onye kero wa gagosi ge. Nzo bunkegi, omu mu bunkegi, iha ge ji zo mu bunkegi. Ani ne ekpe ekpe le, ekpe le ne ekpe abo ma na na bunke, bunke ne ekpe le bunke kosto fuko. Ne ge na na ge hunro ge na anya, buru ge ge na show anya, mele ge anya. Ma fun that future anya the very bright because on the di legi, bu future Nigeria, on di de li bu future Africa. I can not get you who because he is. Chine ke gagosi ke gagosi is in ulugi. I mean, my colleague Dibia, Dibia, okay, Dibia. One thing for sure, Eba, na show anya. Obi de tamu maike, Obi de tamu maike because he from for a tar. I have friend Bobola. Yes. I have friend Bobola. He got le a children. A para Bible geba, a para Quran geba, a para. If I go to Basara, religion on the other, we find I am accusing me of my. If I say for even then, I am accusing me of my, of my Allahwa. I say the time I came, all the time I came, I am so proud of this mother, the father, and this child. And as far as I'm concerned, we will never ever stop fighting this battle for the emancipation of the African mind, because our future is dependent on children like him, on yes, parents, man. on his his parents. Yes. Chineke Gozunu, I am so happy right now, just being this call. I can't, I'm gonna talk about this forever, and I'm gonna cut this clip, and I'm gonna cut the clip from your earlier statements, okay, Dibia? And I'm just gonna package that, and I'm gonna reintroduce it yes. in a very short version. Because the whole African nation needs to hear this. This little guy, this thing, um, Chikasiele, I'm going to introduce you to my grandsons. They are eight, they are nine and eight. And they are speaking Igbo. They speak Igbo. They live in America, but they speak Igbo. Because I speak Igbo to them. It's important for them to learn what we've done what you've shown is why it's imperative for the parent to be engaged in the language the children are speaking. He didn't learn this on his own. He told you. His mom and dad. He told you when he learned this thing. His mom and dad. So the rest of us, we are people who live, who speak the language. Mom speaks evil, dad speaks evil, the child can't speak evil. So for those of us who have not done our job, you should tell us the work is not done. It is young people like this that remind us why we're doing cheism. We're doing this because if we don't, we leave them nothing. If the adults don't promote the culture, the children have nothing. He didn't learn this on his own. He learned it from his parents. So the question is, mom and dad, wherever you are, what are you teaching your children? Easier. You learn the the Mexican one night one on our table. I mean, on our soul Mexican, on our soul uh, Spanish. Get the Japanese, get the Chinese. When you learn our soul, I be a soul me man ya bulul basu. Look at this little boy. That's why when my grandchildren, when they, when you say, take it. Ama, imani, kasi kung ano to, yung boy yung le, pat boy yung sol, pat boy yung ay na sol, yung le, yung le, yung le ulap po, yung jiki le, yung jiki humo to yung ay le, ane may ay le, ako siya po yung machine. I do that to let them know, to understand that they have a language.
language besides English? Let me ask mom a question. Ma, Ma. On the hand. Come on, come Mama, come on. This is really well. Not on. We are so proud of you. If female or man, if you know me, we send man in me. Oh, if you man, oh, if you know me, oh, we came from up there na 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 internet. He did a prayer on the in the internet, and he mentioned my kioke. Wow. He mentioned my kioke when he poured libations. That's beautiful. Did you know Kel? Did you know Kel Konyoha? I think they're frozen. Are you from them or frozen? Ma? Uh huh. Am I Kel Konyoha? I'm Kel Konyoha. Yes. He's from Okonyoha. I am Okonyoha. Yeah. Um, first, first of all, before I ask any questions, I would like to thank um, Candy K. I would like to thank the ancestors for bringing forth this child and bringing forth this mother and the parents of this child for such a great work that he is doing and the future of African people and those of the diaspora, because not only are you representing uh, evil culture and the and the, and the um, African diaspora. You're 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 um, representing and keeping going the needed lineage because me as African American and those in the Caribbean, we have lost lost connection with our culture, and it is such a blessing to be able to know your language, to be able to know who you are. And to keep that. So I would like to ask, what inspires you to um, have such a passion to continue the evil culture and keeping it alive and learning the language? Great question. And all that you're doing. You know, lost it. Huh? What helped? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, what inspired you? Why you do like in a mayibo? Can you make you do my singing a mayibo? Maka, you have a road you must sing in a mayibo, Bumaka. Among them, Bumaka, as you see, will be Jimaram. Oh, wow, as you will be Jimaram. And yeah. On your market, so as to say, but still they are ashamed of themselves because on your market, so as to say, but I'm okay, so as to another man's language. So, yeah, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to don't let it overcome your culture. Wow. Yeah. What? <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> the, reason, the reason why he, he thinks it's imperative to learn the culture okay, and the okay. language Man, is because he said, just, he said that he's proud to be a new boy that he, because he, what is his identity. That he's yes. not gonna with you knowing English language. He's not wrong. But don't allow it to form ahead of your culture. Your culture should be yes. placed first. Yes. Yes. Because yes. it is true, wrong. True. You should have, he said, 
he said you should be ashamed of yourself as uh -huh. a little person that you can speak another man's language but you don't know how to speak yours yeah. Yeah. absolutely absolutely you is so right uh, uh, uh professor what are your thoughts well, my thoughts are simple uh no yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 In Canada, I wouldn't have one guy, and I think I asked to see my youth, I see my youth, all nigger, I know, Tajier, Kujier, Jicota, a good old manager. Yeah, is that easy? Very easy. I go there, go there, give mamma, go there, you know, oh, my God, you know, 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 Every man knows to him to go out. Every man knows to him to go out. He can't know to him. My young God, my Lulu, my young Dini Lulu. You can see that Gogi is going to Gogi is not going to land. Gogi is going to go. He say, oh, he say, he say, it's very, it's very. Uh, I'm saying that I will find the mother prime minister. Because the white English people say the language of any language, native language, is mother tongue. And we are more, we are living inside Mother Earth. And it's called mother tongue. Which is why it prioritized that our women should be most educated in culture. Education because even women are given the right education and they have everything, they will easily impart it to their children. Yeah, the Christ as you mm. saying, the Christ we have in Africa is that when the white man came, the first target was the women, not even the children. The first target was the women because if you want to become a man, take his woman. Once you take his woman, the woman collects her children. Uh -huh. So maybe they, they build social amenities, maternities and other things, not for the men, for the women. So that the women can be pleased. And so the women begin to like the white man. So they collected the women to the church. The women drag their children to the church. They do not build schools for the children. And then the women and the children drag the men there. So today, marry her. We don't want to go to the man's culture to marry the woman. Because the first thing is that we must go to the woman's culture. The woman has come to visit the man. Then the two cultures meet. That no longer happen. So, I in a major menu, we are not doing culture, what you say, culture of the sky. Because in in every African, the Igbo language I know, so or men and the universe will say as well, both India and Latin, Earth, Mother Earth, we will do what as is done in the mother earth, mother tongue. But we are now doing, we have the women of land left the language for our father. And you know for Igbo, in Igbo, father is the sky. So everything is floating in the sky. Nothing is balanced on earth anymore. So it is the you women, like I keep saying, the women, that is the power. And once we grab this power, mother discriminates against no child. Fathers discriminate, fathers have favor rights. Mothers don't have favor rights. Every child is a child. And one or our women can take charge of our culture, be in charge. The power the women are looking for, they will dictate who becomes who. That's right. They will dictate who becomes who. That's right. That is the power of the woman. But today in Africa, the woman has left her power. And she's looking for power in the sky. Yes. And she forgot that she is the owner of the earth. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, okay Deba, let me let me add a few things right quick. Just a minute. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, Ch 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 I'm going to mute you for a minute because this noise coming from your uh, from your mic. So when when I'm ready for you to speak, I'll unmute you. Okay. So don't unmute yourself. Once I put mute, let it stay muted. Okay. Until the time for you to speak. So here we go. All right. Okay. Okay, Yudi. Yeah, uh, just to add to what uh, Professor Chidos here was uh, talking about, uh, uh, it is said that culture is the backbone of the people. Yes. And the future of the people is the children, right? Now, we, we understand that uh, as far as God, Chinek is concerned, there's a male and female component mm -hmm. to spirituality. And uh, as much as those in Christianism emphasize that God is a man, but the same cultures and all world cultures understand that there's more emphasis on the metrical component mm -hmm. of existence. Just like Professor Chidozier mentioned, it's Mother Earth. Nobody talks about Father Earth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's Mother this and Mother that. Mother's nurture. It's always about the motherly component of existence when it comes to human relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't talk a whole lot about the father. It doesn't mean that the father is not important. Of course. But the fatherly duty is so cut and dry. Yes. Sometimes, at least in our modern context, to say he's a provider, that's about all there is to it. Yes. Once in a while, you may take your son to go fishing even though he wants to be a doctor, but taking him to fish doesn't mean that you want him to be a fisherman. It's just a way of you bonding with your child. That's right. When you're not there trying to make money or do whatever it is to make sure that your family is not lacking because that's what you understand that your duty as a man is. You just can't sit around and let him mooch off your wife and your children. But the woman is the one that pretty much molds your child into becoming what your child becomes. That's right. It is the woman that is responsible for instilling the level of spirituality that is needed to raise a healthy, culturally conscious child. Yes. Like the professor mentioned, Chidos, I've always, and you've heard me say this, the greatest tragedy, one of the greatest tragedy in our African and African-American communities is the Sunday sermon. Because when you go to church on Sunday, they're telling you about Adam and Eve. They're not telling you about Ifenta and Adha, no. which in Imporo spirituality, Ifenta is the first man, Adam is the first woman. That is why in Igbo language, in all Igbo cultures, the first daughter is known as Adha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is because that is the name of the first woman or the female that Chineke made, created, Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam. In the Jewish context, they say Adam mm -hmm. is a male. But in our context, it's Adam. But you go to church on Sunday, they tell you about the Israels, the Israelites in uh, 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 Egypt. Mm -hmm. They tell you about Babylon. They tell you about every cultural history that is aligned with Christianism. You never learn anything in church about your African culture, about your African history. <laughs> No. They teach you nothing about your evilness. No. You don't go to church tomorrow and learn what it is like as a primordial Kenyan. You don't go to church on Sunday and learn what it is like as a primordial Lumpuro person. Or Hafia, Yoruba, Zulu. You don't get that on Sunday, but you go to church on Sunday, they'll tell you about the Israelis. Then they yeah. tell you about the Israelis again. Then they tell you about the Israelis. Then you grow up to think that you are a product of Israel. That, that, that's right. Let, let me let me let me ask uh, because this first half is devoted to this young man. Yeah, and, go ahead. Uh, allow him to you know mm. to to go. Uh, they can they can stay. If they want to stay, but I still have some questions so that we can do the second part of this program, which is the uh, lecture by yeah. uh, Professor Chidozier. But I want to ask the mother. Uh, it, it does does he have a program that he uses to teach other kids how to speak Igbo? Do, does he have a program? 
because I think I saw him or people coming to his page to learn how to speak to him. How did that come about? Uno Lemse? Huh? I didn't get you, man. I didn't get yeah. you. He has a program where he teaches all that children how to speak Igbo. Am I right? He's not. She's not hearing me. Can you hear me? No, man. Enulemse. Enulemse. Okay, now kuzirin how to speak Igbo. I can't hear you, man. Uh, is she muted? Are you muted? Are you no, muted? Yeah, so but you can't hear me. I don't teach, I teach, but not language. Okay, are I you teach, a teacher? But not language. Okay, does he have a program? Because I know yeah, his work. Uh, uh -huh, that's what I'm saying. But, uh, he, how did that come about? How is it how does he teach other kids how to speak it? Is this, I, I, I think there's a delay. It's yeah. just not hearing me somehow. Well, let me ask you. Does she have, does he, uh, uh, do you have a brother and sister? Do you have siblings? You don't want me. Huh? Chica, I tell you. You don't want me. Do I have? You don't want me. Do you have other children? No, no, no. Huh? You don't want me. No, no, no. You don't want me. No, no, no. He's the only child. That's why all <laughs> the energy is focused on him. That is awesome. That is awesome. But when uh, uh, Chica tell you, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's never been here. Yeah, but you know, let me say. Oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I like to be a footballer. A footballer? Footballer. A what? A, a soccer star. Oh, you want to play soccer? Yeah. In my basketball. I like to be a footballer. Yeah, in my basketball. In my boy. In my boy. In my last boy. Do you know how to play soccer? I say never play. In my case, I bubble. Mom, I have got into a profession. Eh, yeah, it's your baby. I want to I be a professional, now, but it's not as a professional. Oh, no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps down the road. Perhaps down the road. Let me ask you: Is 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 um is the husband also engaged in teaching him? Big on this one, a kuzili on this one, a kuzili ibo. I found on a sunulu no phone no book no. So do you speak just ibo in your household or do you encourage that that's what? Ah, it's our thing. It's me, me, Jim. Me, Jim, that kuzili a sunulu ibo. But oh, monta, monta, boy, you carry on. You know, sala. Aha, aha. Just like you said. But so instill that language into the boy is yeah. the business of the mother. Yes. See, that's just it. This is how important we are. The, 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 uh, uh, Professor, uh, no, 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 most of our, most of our. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. Bye here. Bye. Okay, man. Most, most of our videos, most of our his videos, the ones on his page are being cooked by the dads. It's not as he he has his own role to play. I can all do I have my own role. He has his own roles. He understands. Mm -hmm. uh, most of his videos cinematographer. So he does most of the cooking job in, in the studio. Mm -hmm. That's his jurisdiction. My jurisdiction is raised to me Igbo. If you talk to me in English, I can't give you a listening ear. Yes. For instance, before now, Cassiano used to, he was calling me mommy. 
before now, he addresses me as mommy. I was one that was like, no, this thing does not, it doesn't go well with me. Call mm. me Nem. Nem. I asked him, what, what mm. do Igbos call mother? He said, Nem. Beautiful. Abu uh -huh. Mulegi. Some people yes. might see it as being a key. Uh -huh. It's not to me because my language no. is not a key. No, thank I, you. I, I taught him to call me Nem. And I told yes. him to call his father Nam. Yes. 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 Beautiful. So that is my grandchildren don't call me grandma. They call me nene. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing, this is their language. We have words, we have names for our own things, our own people. You know, so don't call me grandma. Call me nene. I'm your mother's mother. And that's what they do. And every time they forget, I have to remind them. Um, who's that nene? You see. So it's so important. I think we lost it. It's so important. I, I can't even begin to ex express the joy that I see with this little guy. And this is not going to be the last time we're going to invite him because uh, you're now our son. We have adopted him. Yes. So now yeah. I we are going to invite him. Yeah. Because on Tigeto, Huh? You know, it's so important, it's so critical. I want to take a, a, a quick break and, and, and play this uh, video. Uh, uh, it's a song that you've heard before I sang, but it's a matter of us. Uh, it, as we go about praising Chineke, praising whatever we praise, let's do that kindly. Let's do that honestly. Let's not undermine anyone because everybody's important. So we all be the money to Chineke. That's what I want to play right now. So you all. One second. Where 
Yes. I'm still bumping. I'm, I'm still rocking, baby. Look at that. I can't stop. Can't help myself. Let's all be kind to each other. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, respect and honor each other and respect things that belong to other people. Their culture, their color, their gender, everything. It's all part of the creation of Chineke. So yes. we must not subdue anybody. We must not make sure that everybody, we must make sure that everybody feels comfortable inhaling and exhaling in this world we're living. Nobody yes. owns Chineke. Nobody owns God. God belongs to everybody. If that is what you see, if you're black and you see God as black, it's okay. If you're, if you're Asian and you see God as Asian, it's okay. If you're white and you see God as white, it's okay. It is God from your perspective, from yes. who you yes. know, from what you see from your environment. It is bad when we undermine people. It is bad when we take from people. It is bad when we tell our children that they're not good enough. It is bad when the parents are not upholding what you need to do. And what you need to do is make us differently. And we must not undermine each other. So I'm Diversity gonna, is divine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick up what we're talking about. Uh, uh, we have a comment here by... Uh, uh, a Facebook user, uh, I think this is uh, Nosferatu. The boys call you, call me that because of her. And she makes sure that the children call me Nene. So she wants, she wants to remind me that. And that's true. Because every time she hears them say uh, uh, grandma, she also says no. It's Nene. Call her Nene. And that's very important. And she also says I make sure that you speak Igbo to them, and I insisted upon that even before they were born. That's true. That's true. My daughter always insists that I speak Igbo to the boy, and and you know, and tell them stories in Igbo and all of that. But next time when we do, when, when we do a show with uh, Chika Sielu, we'll bring the boys in so that they can talk in Igbo. <laughs> that would be very interesting, wouldn't it? Okay. So, but anyway, anyway, one more question I want to ask uh, Chika Sielu. Um, when when you have other children, when the other children hear you speaking evil, what do they say to you? What do they say to you when they hear you speaking evil? And they're speaking English and you're speaking evil. Get it, and I say, what do they say to Some people are doing getting married in the Aswas <laughs> Some people are not forcing you to be king. Massa, Massa, as to be king, Maka, as to be the cabo, as to soon. As to be cabo, is Madame. A mamma, is Madame, we ask to see the king. Is Madame Bo, as to see you. Yame, Madame, so be king. Mamma, soon. Mom, this young man is a chase. He just a chase at heart, man. Mom, go ahead and interpret. Bravo. I can do it, but you go ahead and do it. No, no, my friend, my interpret to talk by no kubeke. Okay, ask me, 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 if not a merry, okay, I rose on me, boy, you go me, go on you go. Okay, let it ask to see you go. I want to say, I'm on your boy, you go, no, you see, Kelly, I can lay a bona, what's that? Your salad, so you can see, like, on a hand, crap, why that's nothing come more than what I see. When say, Happy fair, Becky, I'll say, I'm to see you go, Bunji, Maria, or if I see you go. I am around to be care, I have one so see, I am around so see. Do, 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 uh, uh, do, for Dr. Simona, what the yes. young man is saying is that when you meet other young people, uh, other people ask him, why do you speak evil? Why don't you speak English? And he says, mm -hmm. English is not my language. I'm speaking what I'm known, who I am is evil. So I yes. speak my language. And yesterday there was a, uh, a woman who was asking the mother, why is this child always speaking evil? Why is he not speaking English? And the and the child is telling is saying, well, this is this is who she is. He is. He's evil. And that's yes. that's just the way it is. I tell you, 
tell you, I when I uh uh, uh kick us early, when I went to Nigeria, then they are Nigeria last time India. Uh we went to the mall, Nigeria mall. Uh woman man I saw the kid. The children were speaking English. Who's one man? Say what I saw one we book. Did they speak Hugo? You know I say about us, what did I say from? <laughs> she says that we, this, uh, uh, her children go to school, and because they go to school, they don't speak evil. They speak English because they don't go to school. Because they go to school. So my question was, is that the purpose of school to teach you of your, your language? And you're a you what you're not bad. You can know that dog. And when I got sweet, she was so happy that her child was not speaking evil. I can't tell you the shame I felt for that woman. And then I just ate her raw, excuse the expression. I told her, you can be a thing to do. You can't have one, I'm not going to do that for one. I'll be fine. I want you to know that I'm not trying to do that. Oh, you got no channel, though. They not quite yet. So, if I be I leave the cage. I So, if I in a metric, I see a who broke a mantle. I want. Oh, yes, say the one for her the same. I am suffering. Oh, yes, the father, huh? Fire up the two baby bone water. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to and I'm proud of you. You're already doing that. So, we're so very proud of you. Yes. Yes, we are. We're proud of whoever is teaching you all of this gifts of which is mom. Mom, congratulations. We yes. Power to you. And that's why when people say my fatherland, I say, no, no, baby, turn around and say my motherland. Yeah. Yes. Mother Earth. Is my motherland. I mm -hmm. There is no shame in saying motherland because what you're doing is you're honoring the nurturing aspect of mothers. Yes. The, the, the continent nurtures you. The continent births you. The feminine energy is what other people are recognizing. But you know, my father, and, you know, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that we don't honor and respect fathers. But you, we know who's doing all that training. We know where all that's coming from. Yes. If the mother is not in the home. The children. Cannot learn certain things unless the father, of course, insists himself with teaching it. But if he's off to work or wherever he goes, you know, it's still the mom who's responsible for this. It's the mom. But I don't care who on your hands. He was never wrapped up in that masculinity thing. He honored man, he honored woman. And that's what I, I respect about him. And that's what gives me the impetus to do what I do today to keep in front of anybody. Because of my father. Yes. Daddy will tell you, Floriette. You do your now. It's true. He will tell you, Floriette, he never understood, he never divided. This is my son, this is my daughter, it was my children. And he honored the mother who had this, uh, uh, who's the mother of his children. So I just want to say one thing, right quick, just real quickly about what you just said. People may not know this. There is nothing that I hang K O K on your heart achieved spiritually. There is no organization, both in traditional medicine, that his wife no was not a part of. Yes. Whatever was conferred to my father was conferred to my mother. Whatever spiritual knowledge my father had, my mother had it. There are places in Numpuro in my village that women cannot go into just because of their role. Mm -hmm. My daddy made sure that my mom went in there with him. Dibia no no, Ahai no no, no no no. There was nothing that the Dibia knew that my mother didn't know. There was nowhere spiritually that a man can go into in Numpuro that my mother did not go into. So my father never drew any distinction between male and female. He understand that women had roles. He understand that men had roles that are natural. But in terms of your ability to do stuff, as far as he was concerned, if you can do it, 
it didn't matter to him if you were a man or a woman because he always understood that in the end spiritually speaking mm -hmm. the woman pays or should i say the woman is an integral part yes. of our spiritual journey that's right the earth births you the universe births you your mother births you a dog births a puppy a horse births a, 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 a baby horse whatever you call it a sheep burps a little you know goat lamb whatever all animals have male and female components to them the male provides the seed that's all you do the woman incubates yes. and births and nurtures so as long as men and women understand their role i think we will have the kind of respect that we need for each gender so that we could be more accomplished as a people unfortunately yes. africans have adopted this viking mentality mm -hmm. that the woman is subservient and you got to leave it there and mm -hmm. the man goes in conquers mm -hmm. does everything blah 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 that's not african spirituality eventa now damn all everything that i've given to you is for your goodness from trial and error you will be able to perpetuate those things that are good for you to help your existence in this world it is through trial and error that we learn things so many people have died for us to enjoy the food that we eat now they ate some food that was poisonous and it killed them and they understood that i cannot eat this again it is yes. bad for you yes it is true trial and error that we're able to perpetuate our existence on earth mm -hmm. people should understand that men are just as important as women and women are just as important as men mm -hmm. it is 50 50 but in terms of the totality of your human experience the female mm -hmm. is numero uno understand it you provide the seed that's all you do the incubation of that baby the birthing of that life the nurturing of that life teaching that child Igbo, chinese japanese whatever your language may be nurturing that child to become a spiritual and culturally aware member of the society is the woman if you take your child to church every day and alienate your children from their cultural spiritual perspective and primordial core you are doing damage to the future african generation Mm -hmm. mothers take note look at the mother on this screen look at the three mothers on this screen mm -hmm. and understand mm -hmm. that we need women in our african uh, communities that have the same kind of intellectual capacity and spiritual awareness as these three women that you're looking at right now on the screen yeah. all mothers should emulate them because that is where the future of africa lies that's what i got to say yeah, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So, we've come to the end of the one hour that you, you have joined us. We're so very proud of you. I cannot tell you. Yes, we are. Awesome. Yes. We think you are. You, you say, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go yeah. Yeah. We, we, we are finished with that in interview of you. Mom, we're so proud of you. Tell your husband. Yes. yes. So proud of him. You guys are exemplary. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I, oh, if I, oh, if I, oh, imagine you to see him. Oh, no, I'm proud of you. Put up with now you can they can you stick around for the show they don't have to leave now no no do you do you have anything you want to say to Katia? you want to add something 
Oh, we think that by Fantastic, thank you. Mom, right. you want to add? Mm -hmm. No, we feature it by. Yeah, we feature it by ending, ending, ending. We feature it by. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If I hate my Bible, you make a woman in my Marandai. You make one of women in my Marabai in Sakosa. I like a male one, Kawaha people with a walk with the rebel or one walk for some. That's right. You make a one game, this one's a soggy. Marrow Mera Allegan. Mara Mara Pisa for some. Mana <laughs> Who yes. don't speak Igbo, just yeah. in a nutshell, what she's saying is that you must embrace your children. Our children, they are language and our culture. Our children need to know it so that they don't get lost. Just because they speak the language does not diminish them in any way. It doesn't prevent them for, from achieving all that you want them to achieve. As a matter of fact, it might make them even more successful because they have a certain sense of identity. It is an embarrassment, it's a shame that we succumb to this whole speaking something foreign and our children are not learning their own. So, I mean, I, it can't be said any better than that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I love you. I mean, hey, listen, this little guy is my new grandson. I'm telling yep. you <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take a quick break and I'll take a quick break and I'll be right there. one. Long life to y'all. Hey, how y'all doing, man? You know what I'm saying? We just, I'm just walking out here in nature, and I just felt like I had to say thank you all for showing us the support. Because I know there's been technical problems and been a lot of things going on in the world, but y'all stay and tune in every Sunday. And I much appreciate y'all for all the support. Over 11,000. I said 11,000. 111 subs on YouTube. So much love. Appreciate y'all. And I know there's over like thousands over on Facebook. 
But make sure to tune into our YouTube every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Turn on the post notifications. Like, comment, skit, subscribe. Gosh. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. It will be much appreciated. And y'all have a wonderful day and have a blessed day. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. No, thank you for that. And then on that note, we thank our dear young guest yes. today. You feel free to stay if you want to stay. That'll be all right. But uh, we have a lecture series. Uh, we have a uh, professor. Uh, uh, before, before the professor comes, I want to tell you that we have a powerful show next segment. You said not show segment next Sunday because we are going to have. Dr. Obi on your hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. oh yeah, that's going to be great. Yeah. He is going to talk, talk to us about some of the misconceptions about Jesus, the misconception about the, the kings of Egypt, misconceptions about what traditional African and what borrowed. It's going to be explosive. You don't want to miss next Sunday. Yes. Dr. Gibia, Dr. Run Your Hat. Yes. Is going to blow your mind next Sunday. If you don't make that show, you don't make anything in this world, you do not want to miss this show. I just want to throw that in there because I am going to be promoting that because you guys are really important. In the so, on that note, we bring in uh, Divya K. Dozier. This is your your mm -hmm. lecture series. So go for it. Yeah. About the importance of telling our truth. Truth, right? You can choose the power. Yes. 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 Okay. 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 Uh, well, um, uh, I think uh, I I threw in a piece about um, I go to Onyeho, now Eke, which is it was translated mean a snake seen by one person is easily hyperbolized to become a python, meaning that for there to be objective knowledge for for us Africans. What, are, what we mean is that there must be a consensual approach to it. Um, and I, I came about this because of uh, the discourse in philosophy, whereby in the West, they, are, they, they took a long while to, to arrive at what, what are the criteria of objective knowledge. And Africans long ago sought the criteria for objective knowledge to be that it must be evidence-based, it must have a witness. And if it is evidence-based and have a witness, it must have empirical dimension, rational dimension, it must have pragmatic effects, it must have soft problems, it must be recent, as I said, it can, by addressing problems, it is recent. Then it must be revelatory, it must bring them bring up something new. Now, uh, what am I saying here? One of the essential problems of the world today is that the old epistemology, like Dibi Ochoa today, Mezia said, the Viking culture, the Semitic culture, the Caucasian culture of one man seeing the world for the whole people, so that when Jesus says, everybody listens, or when Muhammad detects from the mountain, only Muhammad saw the experience. And since Muhammad alone saw the experience, he now dictated the experience for the whole world. Whoever does not listen to it must be leveled down. Africans long ago advocated against this kind of knowledge, a knowledge seen by one person. And even when God reveals it reveals through a means in Africa. That means is known as Abba, Abba, Iba, Abba. In Iba, Abba, it is not interpreted by one Gibia. That is our culture. Because the, what we are talking about here is not a snake. We are talking about vision, knowledge, truth. How does it become objective? It becomes objective through consensus dialogue, through consensus, through dialogue. 
when we dialogue and we all are discuss one thing seen by one person, the person says, this is what I have seen. Other people interpret it, experience is brought into it. They see how it coheres with a, a reason. They see how it corresponds to reality. They see how it affects man, woman, children, past, present, and future. These are the things Africans take care of. Kwesi will do discuss it as consensual democracy, consensual ethics. But he didn't discuss the knowledge, the procedure of the knowledge. So I am discussing that aspect as someone who is talking about knowledge. So truth for us, for it to be objective, is what all of us as many the process is long and that process is what you call democracy today and which why which is why people like me argue that the west does not have the temperament for democracy we are the ones who have the temperament for democracy because before we arrive at anything public everybody must discuss in it women have their angle women will be discussing it in their own angle men will be discussing in their own angle age grace will be discussing it professional girls will be discussing it children will be asked will see because it affects women women will discuss women are the first people who will say how it's going to affect their children women will not allow anything that was going to stifle the future of their children and because fathers know that women and children are involved they too protect the interests of the women like we always say, um, a father may scold the wife before the children, but ultimately he does the intent of the woman. For example, this story of uh, going to heaven, a man whose wife, who always does the bidding of the wife, went to heaven. There were two gates. The gate of those whose wife controlled when they were on X, they should pass through that gate. And then the gates of those who controlled their wife while they were on earth. So every other man came to heaven and went through the gate of those whose women controlled while they were on earth. This particular man that the wife controlled while he was on earth went to heaven and he passed through the gate of those who controlled their women while they were on earth. The angel stopped you and said, Mister, why are you passing through that gate? We know you so well. So oh, because my wife told me to pass through that gate when I get to heaven. So ultimately, like we just concluded in this program, the, the position of the man is to protect the interests of the women and the children. And we are doing that because without the woman and the children, there is no society. The role of the woman, that's the role of the sky. So consensus knowledge for us is knowledge that is participatory, demonstrative. It has reason in it. It has experience in it. It is pragmatic. It is practical, and all of us have weighed into it. It works for us. So it's like a social contract, and it's not something that one person dictates. One person does not dictate in Africa. So, And I brought uh, uh, the essence of discussing, bringing this to the fore, is to show that our spirituality, our culture, does not impose. Rather, it explores. It exposes. It evaluates. It wants you to see with your own eye, mental and physical, because it is when you see and the image, and it's interpreted to you, and then it touches your spirit. You accept. You become part of it. And so, so that is the process of about peace to the world. So, truth for us, for it to be for truth to be uh, to be uh, uh, for knowledge and truth to be objective for us it must be evidence-based it must have eyewitness people must participate in discussing it we must discuss how it affects everybody all aspects of knowledge must be acknowledged demonstrative reflective introspective imaginative in fact when we talk about for us for us in africa when we talk about truth knowledge we are talking about holistic truth holistic knowledge in other words knowledge that is consensually discussed analyzed and accepted to be so by us not one individual thank you thank you, you.
wonderful. You know, before you go, before I bring uh, uh, Dibio Charger in, I, I've got to, really, I have to ask this question, uh, Professor. Why is it that it appears that we're not very curious? You know, we're, we're, we're not curious people anymore, at least not anymore. So it, there's a tendency, like, you know, if it sounds so good to us, we just go for it. <laughs> it's almost like we lack curiosity to say, okay, let's investigate this information. If you think about everything in Africa, look, look, okay, let's look at what's going on with the Asian population in Africa now. It's like from frying pan to fire. Sure. Eh? I am happy to have a Islam, Bushain, Bru Christianity, Bushain. Where Bru Kalam Kewabia? I am that happy to have a We've left our own things now. You, you, uh, uh, and now we, we're setting up uh, 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 Buddhist temples everywhere. Sure. We're, 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 we're now teaching, you know, we've got the situation of these people about, saying, about that we are now. Well, you, well they, now we're, they're saying we're from Israel. You know, we don't say thank uh, dialogue anymore. It's shalom. Everybody shalom. now shalom, shalom. We're now Israel from Israel. You know, it, I, I only hear, look, being, it, it's okay. It's a global world. It's okay to take this and take that and add to what you've got. But they do funk again. My father says, when you have something sure. and you throw it away, you will never get rich. Oh, that yeah, is our yeah, problem. Yeah. That's our problem right now. We own, we give away, it's brought back to us. We think we got something new, except we just give it a different name. Like my little friend that uh, Chika said, you know, it's not my tongue. It's not who I am. I've got to oh. be me. But we're not curious oh. anymore. We're not curious anymore. We just it was go go Ojinkoji go Ojinkoji go 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 I judge you. So the question I have is, why is it we're not curious anymore? There, there are two uh, two basic reasons I can decipher for now. There are more. But what has just come to my mind are two basic reasons. The first one is what where we started from in this on this program today. Mm -hmm. We are no longer within our culture. And so because we are no longer within our culture, we do not have the orientation, the mental orientation for inquiry. Uh, rather, we are busy scavenging. We are more like scavengers. In fact, we are not even searching for anything. Even in the civilizations that we have gone to, we are not mm -hmm. searching. No. We are just scavenging because mm -hmm. education for us, Western education is for white collar jobs. It's certificates. We are searching for certificates. Mm -hmm. We are not searching for knowledge. And yeah. don't forget one of the, uh, where one of the, uh, this thing uh, I said one time, uh, King uh, Lopo II, when he sent the missionary, Bengal missionaries to the Congo, one of uh, the speech he gave to them, one of the instructions there is that set up the schools. In mm -hmm. the schools, Teach Africans how to read, but not how to reason. So okay. the education even is not to develop the intellect. It's not to develop mm -hmm. the human being. It mm -hmm. is just to give you a certificate. And once you have that certificate, it deadens, it blows, it blunts. Yes. Then it, you, it not creates a culture of us versus them. Now, while in Nigeria here, I thought that we are crazy. But when I went to Ghana, I... I, 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 <laughs> you saw people crazier than us. <laughs> I saw that what we have left from 10, 20, 30 years ago. Here, nobody talks about whether you read in Harvard or you. And what we are talking about here is who can do the job. We have gotten to that level here. But I went to Ghana and I see some sons of people talking about themselves being about Cambridge scholars, Harvard mm. scholars. Nobody talks about that here. What they, are, what they talk about is Put the thing there who can do the work, who can do the work. That's the state we are now here. So it, it, that's the first thing. The first thing is that we are no longer, there's no orientation for us. Because you search, 
when you have the orientation to do so. Like our son here is into self-search. Because yes. he's into self-search, he is curious of everything around him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But once you don't, once you don't have that training, you will not have the orientation. Gibia, but people don't get it. So culture makes you to develop that. And unfortunately, we are out of our culture. And then secondly, even the ones we have taken to, we are not taught to search. We are only taught to uh, what they call impressions. If you go to empiricism, the empiricists have this doctrine that the human mind is tabula rasa, blank, mm -hmm. and things of the world impress on it. The danger in that is that you are bringing up zombies. So we are yes. the human zombies. What well, we are zombies in Africa. So we are busy scavenging, looking for survival. You know, like someone who doesn't know how to swim, and the 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 the, the, the storm or, or the flood takes the individual into the waters, and so you mm -hmm. you are just scavenging, trying to survive. That's what we are mm -hmm. doing. We are not mm -hmm. into self set once you are not into self-search you cannot be curious you cannot ask mm -hmm. questions so today mm -hmm. if you are searching you are a fool in nigeria today if you are searching you are a fool if you are doing genuine research you are a fool mm -hmm. you die yes. of hunger you do yes. textual research just copy and paste from one book say what is popular and then you live big you write big cars mm -hmm. that is not about searching it's not about being curious it's only about mm -hmm. surviving that's what we are yes. doing for now that, that, so, so that's that's what the school system that we have there. That's what it's focusing on, and sure. uh, teaching it's us how to Africa, that's what it is. It, what to report it, 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 it. And that is why when the Europeans came, they introduced other courses. They started by teaching us their own religion. Yes. They started by teaching us to move from religion to law. They moved mm. from law to their own history, but they don't. They didn't even teach us their own philosophy. They didn't teach us philosophy in any guise. Because mm -hmm. once you teach philosophy in any guise, it makes the individual to be curious. That's it right. now remains whether the individual will be curious within a Western perspective or within, uh, like one of the, the problems that, that uh, uh, developed in philosophy is there an African philosophy. Mm -hmm. Those who are taught Western philosophy began to query whether Africans have philosophy. If you say mm -hmm. we don't have philosophy, it means we can't reason. So That's they right. have to start talking about reasoning. It is one of the things that pushed people like me when I started reading uh, the beautiful Western uh, theories, dialectics, phenomenology. By the time I started reading the German and French philosophers, I saw that they were deep into their secret societies. I even saw that the French, uh, two French uh, scholars came to Mali to initiate us into the Malian uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Cyrus Society, the Cyrus Society, under Ogoto Mali. And when they went back to France after 20, uh, 20 years, they, they improved uh, French, uh, French astronomy. When I went to initiate into Gibia, uh, uh, Yoruba, Awo, I met white people from America who came to take initiation. And they, they scare us in the churches that those things are devilish. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. all over there in America, in all over Europe, they know that that is where the knowledge is. So when I started reading Hedegaard, reading Kant, I thought that what they were doing was go to their culture, German, French, the raw background of it, the deviant of it, take a concept, and then turn it around. I said, oh, is that what scholarship is all about? Then when I met Fela, Fela not gave, me, gave me the whole secret. I said, hey, that's what it's all about. Oh, I know how to do it. So where does it? Bibia. I said, let me go there. Oh. It was when I went there, it was like, oh, all over his body is demonic. If you touch him, your body touches him, you, you will die. Any, anybody that quarrels with me or tells me and something happens to that person, oh, because you fought with your Yes. If you, if you, uh, my wife walks here, if you scold my wife or maltreat him, and then the person is removed from there, they say, oh, don't you know you were talking, you, you fought with a Dibia's wife? You know, it's that bad. I was, mm -hmm. we have been mentally poisoned. Mm -mm. And we have been fighting to believe, to loathe, not just to hate, loathe what is ours. And that's that is right. a great destruction you can do to any people. That's and right. So that is the, we cannot be curious. Once you do that to a people, they are no longer curious. They'll be fighting for survival. So mm -hmm. what we are doing for now is that we are fighting for survival. Mm -hmm. And we are all slaves. Yes. 
Well, educated, educated slaves. Educated slaves. I, 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 yeah, thank you so much. Excellent, excellent. Now, I want to give Dr. Simona an opportunity to say something. Go on, Dr. Simona. What are your thoughts about what he just said? Well, I, I totally agree. You know, we, um, you know, we have been educated, but we have we have lost wisdom. We have gained knowledge, and knowledge of that has come from what is outside of who we we are. Mm -hmm. And then we have lost wisdom. We have lost wisdom because you know knowledge is one thing. Knowledge is just knowing. Knowledge is reading a book. Knowledge is you know just knowing information or learning a philosophy. But wisdom is really knowing. Wisdom is true um, intellect. Wisdom is what, what we really need in order to be successful in society. Mm. And I think because we have lost wisdom, mm. that that is hurting our people. Tremendously. We've, we've gained knowledge in all different types of, of, of ways. Mm -hmm. But where's the wisdom? I look around and, and you don't know where is the wisdom. You know, um, for my my culture, the first thing, well, I won't talk about um, that right here. I want to go over this um, first point. The first thing when our oppressor came in, the first thing they did was kill off as many spiritualists mm. as possible. Mm-hmm. That was our wisdom. That was they knew that that was the key hmm. to who we are. When you take someone's identity, that's right. That is everything. That's what has happened. And me as an African American, they did that to the furthest extent. Totally disconnected us from our culture and who we know to be from uh, the gods of our ancestors. Hmm. A lot of times I can only say because we have been, uh, you know, we have been so removed from who we are. I can only say and I say it all the time. Thank the gods of my ancestors. Because that is who I really am. What I learned all I knew and growing up and all that I was given is Christianity. All I was given is that's all I knew. And many of us around uh, the diaspora and America and the diaspora, we do not know our African culture. We have no idea what that is. Mm -hmm. But that is why this, the child here is so important. And that is why I sit in the seat that I do. And I'm so passionate about preserving our African heritage. Is because we need a future. Our, our, we will die out. That is what people don't understand. Who we really are will die out. There is a mandate, a genocide against who we are. And we cannot be European. We cannot be the Chinese man. We have to be Africans. I know in talking to my daughter, I'm so passionate about preserving what has like with my mother-in-law she brought africa to the america into america and mm. things that people did not know she was one of the people that helped to bring the uh culture our roots back but it is my mission to keep that going mm. i tell my children you are african Mm -hmm. My daughter that's seven mm -hmm. years old, she says, mom, I'm African. I tell all my friends, we live in an Arabic community. And as she said, I tell all my friends, I am African. Every day when I'm doing their hair, I'm conditioning them. Your hair is so beautiful. And they will say that my seven year old, she says, she said, I am so beautiful. I have African hair. I have African hair. It's beautiful. <laughs> So we have to instill that inside, you know, we have to instill that. Let's, we gain knowledge. Nothing is wrong with knowledge. That's right. We have to maintain wisdom 
of who we are. He said, he said, and have respect for our ancestors. This yeah, is yeah. giving respect for my ancestors. They did not deserve for the, everything that is African to be taken away from them. That's right. Or having to be, um, you know, because they want to preserve their African culture and serve their God to be killed or tortured or yeah. whatever atrocities that happen. Can I can I say can, can I say something? Thank you so much for for all of you. I look at what's going on right now. Nigeria is going through this process of um, of uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 election, the election coming up, you know, and you know what I noticed? I don't know if any one of you picked it up. I noticed that the candidates are all going to the church. They're going to either the mosques or they're going to the Christian church. I'm yet to see one of them go and see an African, an authentic African and ask that question. What do you want from me as your leader what are you look what can i do everything is what can you do for the christians and what can you do for the muslims so to me it's still frying pan to fire nothing is gonna change with this yes our mentality is going to remain the same thing nothing yeah. is going to change i don't care who you put in there because all of them are running to the churches you know what i did I put out a uh, uh, info. I want Peter Obi to come to cheese in life. Would he come? No, but I'm inviting him. I've sent out the invitation. Come and speak to people outside of the Christian church. Speak to people outside of the Muslim church. They are Africans. Yes. They are authentic Africans that you need to speak to and see what they're going through. See how, because it's at that level that you can find out the eradication of the culture. That's where you're going to find out what's going on. Atiku, Tinubu, all of them. They're all wrapped up in the foreign cultures, foreign spirituality. Yes. None of them that I have seen. I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. I am yet to see which one of them has made hi, baby, which one of them has decided, hey, how about the traditionalists? Go, Dibia uh, and then Yudi. Go ahead. Uh, well, I just want to chip in this. The African thing is done, but at the background. I hope so. In fact, oh, it is done, but at the background. Um, and here, I will say, of the three of them, the person that will be closest to the Yoruba culture, African uh, Yoruba African culture, is Tinubu. In fact, okay. you may be surprised that Tinubu himself is a Dibia, a Yoruba Dibia, uh, Babalao. Mm. But the only problem is that his use of it is not the way we are thinking about it. His use of it is about for domination. Okay. So knowing, knowing Africa for what do you know it? Is it to dominate people? If you are going to talk to another person that would come to cheese him, for instance, is Obasanjo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he he wants it not the way Keiko Unyo wants it for knowledge, yeah. Yeah. enlightenment, for liberation. He wants it for domination. Hmm. So they go into African culture at night. Uh -huh. uh, for someone like Peter, remember what I said two weeks ago? I said I've listened to him. He's floating in the surface in the sense that he's only talking about econometrics and economics. He has not touched on what really is our problem. Africanity. Thank and you. He's, I'm looking for that. He has touched on it. And mm -hmm. none of them will talk about that. Uh -huh. So, but the only thing going on for him, like I said, is that of all the devil's alternatives, he mm -hmm. seemed to be a sinner one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. It does not mean that he, when he gets there, he knows what our problems are. Uh -uh. He doesn't, he knows what our problem is because we have one problem. And that mm -hmm. one essential problem is identity. All right, Identity. apart from uh, yes. Zik, Wayne, Kuma, Jogo Kieta, the first generation leaders of which Keo Kionyo is part of them. Mm -hmm. they, well, after, after them, those of them coming down from them, we have forgotten about Pan Africanism, mm -hmm. and that is why you find that we are thrown, we are thrown scattered, thrown yes. 
in the two corners of the world. Pan Africanism is no longer there. So you see that black on black, um, eat black eat black is very rife now. Mm -hmm. Formerly, Ghana used to be a place of hope for Africans to go. Mm -hmm. But you go to Ghana today, Pan Africanism is dead. They are even trying to let down Nkrumah's uh, uh, image, both his ideology, the current mm -hmm. man there. So you see, so and when they ask me why are we so divided now, and I say because Pan Africanism is dead. Because well, you know, there, there are people who are reviving it here, you know, trying to get uh, all of Africans to come together, you know. So you do have, you know, from the, Af the African American perspective, there's a big push towards Pan Africanism. But the only, the, oh, yeah. the only problem is when you get to Africa, do you have that that mindset? So mm -hmm. at this point, I'm going to ask uh, uh, DBRUD on your hand. Bye. Unmute yourself. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. I didn't want my interference in the background to get in the way. Uh, Divya Chido is right. And you are also right, okay, Divya. Pan-Africanism is dead in African leadership. But below that, you have people of Africans of conscience who are trying to resurrect the past, our greatness, to resurrect the philosophies and reasons that give us our independence from the oppressor. Ghanaian independence, Nigerian independence, Kenyan independence, the Jomo Kenyatas, you know, the Kwame Nkrumahs, the Patrice Lumumbas of Congo, the Ahais, the Ziks, who in 1948, so I think it was, asked for independence in 15 years for all the British colonies. Zig dig that. That's through Pan African thinking. Okay. Now, as far as the leadership is concerned in Africa, Pan Africanism is dead. Since these people passed on, we have not been able to produce any Pan African leader in Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since Niger since Zik went away, since Kwame Nkrumah went away, since Lumumba was killed, how many Pan African leadership have we seen? There is one, the Thomas Sankara, mm -hmm. but he was assassinated because of his Pan Africanism, his way of looking at what Africans need to do to get to the prominence that we seek. Mm -hmm. The junior generators are gone. Those people that didn't believe that American democracy or British democracy is the system that Africa needs. Kwame Nkrumah in 1976 says that Africa was not ready for democracy. There was a lot of work to be done that I don't want to get off the case, uh, the case I'm trying to make right now. Listening to the young man and his mother, listening to Dr. Chidozier, uh, 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 okay, Dibia, Dr. Simon, you guys have said a mouthful. Now it comes down to what we were talking about earlier on, how women are defined in Africa, how women see their role in Africa. We see a role in Africa through the Christian or Islamic culture. We don't see the role of women in Africa from an African perspective or the way it was primordially. We look at women as weak, as a weak component of the society because that's how the Europeans defined African women. Mm. defined our roles mm -hmm. through the Islamic and Christian culture. Mm -hmm. Take the Viking culture, for example. Viking culture was not Christian. Viking culture had women doing the same thing men do. Viking women went into battles and fought alongside their men. Mm -hmm. In African history, mm -hmm. before we started to internalize the European and Islamic culture, before the Usman and Fodios and all that kind of stuff, let's take as recently as I think it was about 1847, something like that. Mm -hmm. There's the Dahemian female army. There's a movie coming out. You guys yes. know about the movie yes. coming yes. out. Yes. The woman king. Dahomey had 5,000 warriors, the best warriors in West Africa. Men were afraid of these warriors, and these warriors were women. So don't tell me that women are weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that a woman's place is in the home. Women understand their role as women. You are the seed. That's all you are. Mm. The woman incubates. The woman births. The woman nurtures. There's mm. nothing weak about these processes. No. There's nothing weak about this role. Oh. A woman who can accept your seed. Mm -hmm. A woman who can incubate a child. Mm -hmm. A woman who can birth through pain. 
a woman who can nurture a child, why would you, in good conscience, tell me that a woman is weak? Are you sick? If that man is sick, women, then you are not African. Because a true African man does not see women as weak. Historically, women have proven. That's right. Based on their roles, they could do just about what any man can do. Yes, maybe a woman cannot be able to lift 10,000 pounds, but I bet you there's a whole lot of women that can lift 500 pounds, and there are men out here that cannot lift 200 pounds. How about that? Say it again. <laughs> With training, a woman can do just about anything. The problem is we as black women in particular, or black women in particular, have assimilated this Christian and Islamic culture that women are weak. Your place is by your man. But yeah, your place is by your man, but not the way they define it. That's right. Mm -hmm. The only person prominent in the Bible that I know about is Ruth. Every woman in the Bible that we hear about usually was the one responsible for the reason why man fell from the grace of God. Yes. Adam yes. ate the fruit because Eve was so evil that yes. Eve disobeyed God and gave him the fruit. But if you read the Bible, you will find out that God never told Eve, Eve not to eat an apple. He told Adam. He told Adam. And when God, ah. and when God asked Adam, what did you do? Why did you do what you did? What did Adam say? Adam said, if it wasn't for this woman that you gave me, I wouldn't have disobeyed you. So don't blame me, blame her. Samson was the most powerful man in the Bible, but he's lost his power because Delilah cut his hair. The woman is tre treacherous. That's what your Christian culture teaches you. And you take your children to church every Sunday to tell them that women are the reason why men are terrible. Mm. It's because of that woman. Mm -mm -mm. God told Lot not to turn back. He told his family not to turn back. But they turn back. Mm. Guess who turned back? The woman disobeying God again. Mm -hmm. So when you go to church on Sunday with your children, teaching them the Bible, the Lord said this and the Lord said that, and Jesus said this, Jesus said that. What I'm saying to you may be controversial, but it's based on truth. The problem is that none of y'all out here, Christian or Muslim, can handle the truth. Only traditionalists can handle the truth. As far as I'm concerned, you guys are all zombies. You take your children to church every Sunday. You're a zombie. Fella put it in a song. Mm -hmm. Don't be when I won't wait. Jo Jara Joro. Don't be when I won't wait. Jo Jara Joro. <laughs> About turn, left turn, right turn. Open your, you know what? Put on four reverse. Turn, uh, uh, marching, march up, whatever it is that zombies do. That's what we Africans do. We have been socialized to be African Europeans. But the European culture is not based on anything primordial to Africa. You cannot see yourself from the eyes of another. Mm -hmm. The European does not see himself from the eyes of an African. No. The Chinese no. don't see themselves from the eyes of the Japanese. The yes. Japanese don't see themselves from the eyes of the Indians. Why should Africans see themselves from the eyes of other cultures as opposed to the eyes of their own primordial culture, just like our little guest and his mother see themselves? Why can't we do that? That's Orientation it. is everything. Orientation is everything, my people. When you go to church on Sunday, you are not doing the black community any favors. When you go to the mosque on Sundays or whenever you go to the mosque, you are not doing the African community any favors. You are helping us regress back into this abyss of hopelessness that we find ourselves in today and the utter disrespect that the world community has for the Africans. Do you know why? Because you don't respect yourself. You don't respect your history. You don't respect your culture. You don't respect your God. Unbeknownst to a whole lot of Africans out there, let me tell you what the Christian culture is doing in Africa right now. Just like Catholicism was trying to use paganism to convince the pagans, the Roman citizens to become part of the African uh, Catholic Church, they incorporated pagan religion into Christianism. There's an attempt right now in Africa to incorporate, incorporate African culture into Christianism so that they can reach those Africans that are not reachable right now. So they can reach people like me and Dr. Chido here that are traditionalists, thinking that if they 
pacify us by incorporating some of our chaste or African spiritual culture into Christianism. Maybe that will help people like me and Dr. Chidi is here and uh, 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 the, the young man and his mother and the guests, you know, for us to join the Christian movement because they are pacifying us by incorporating African culture. This is what is going on right now. We can't handle the truth. Every time you tell an African the truth, they lose their mind. They find every reason to defend those cultures that justified their colonization and enslavement in the first place. What is there to defend? We knew Chineke, we knew God before the European came. We did. We had a spiritual culture. We had DBS, we had scientists, we had doctors, we had architects, we had farmers. We had an army. We had everything that other cultures had. They just told us that we have to do it the way they tell us to do it. Mm -hmm. And through a policy of blood and irons, iron violence, they involuntarily convinced us that we were terrible, both spiritually and otherwise, and we must do things the way they defined us to do it. Look at what King Leopold did to the Congos in Africa. The amputation of over 2 million Africans who did not meet his production quota. You had Africans running around here daily with no hands, no legs, no limbs, defined by the white man and in congo they are more catholic than anybody else they forget what happened to them in our schools we don't teach that in our schools we don't teach it in church we don't teach it in our mosques we don't let our black folks know what happened to africa it is nowhere in our spiritual culture but we have been defined, just like the young man said to think that you have to speak english to be considered an educated person but you forget that in Japan, in Japan, they don't speak English, they speak Japanese, but they make Toyotas, they build airplanes, they make Hondas, they make Acuras, they make Lexus, they make Infinity, they make their own weapons, they make everything that they want, they don't need to import anything. They only do it because international trade calls for it, so they got to export something to get income from it, in Germany, they do math in German. They do physics in German. They write chemistry books in German. In France, they do the same thing. That's Every right. scholarship in France is in French. Every scholarship in England is in English. Every scholarship in a lot of primordial cultures is written in their own culture. But there is nowhere in Africa where a math book is in African language. It's not in Bantu. It's not in Swahili. It's not but, in Yoruba. But, 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 but the Bible is in Igbo. The, the, the Bible is in Igbo. That's the point I'm trying yes. to make. They're trying to incorporate African culture and language into Christianism to make it easier for them to persuade us to follow Christianity. Islam is going to be doing the same thing. They probably have it going on. There's probably Quran in Hausa language right now as we speak. Everything that is African, we have jettisoned it and we have replaced it with something that does not define us, it's not part of our history. We don't teach our history in school. We don't have any chemistry books in any African language. We don't have any books in physics in any African language. We are our own worst enemy. Take some sound bites from what I'm telling you right now and re-socialize your mind to know that we came from a great history. The yes. first mathematical formula ever recorded in human history. It's called the Lebombo Bones, Central Africa, 25, uh, 35,000 years ago. We did math before anybody else did. We mm -hmm. sailed the whole world before anybody else did. Yes. Over 12, uh, 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 1,400 uh, years ago, the first Africans came to North America. Mm -hmm. Migration started from East Africa and spread all over the world. Yes. The European did not come from China. The Chinese person did not come from Europe. They didn't come from Africa, birthed Europe, birthed Australia, the Aborigines, the Black Indians in India, 5,000 years old. We have been everywhere all over the world. Stop minimize African culture and history as if we were less than, as if the Europeans introduced us to anything. They didn't introduce us to anything. 
We yes. were before they came and will continue to be. And as long as we have exercises like Chism Life, as we have, as long as we have great, uh, uh, great patrons like Dr. Simone, Okedibia, Uwanyo Hosimiri, uh, 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 Mr. Mba and his mom, Dibia Chikozi Okoro, and me, we tell me so come on your heart, Obi on your heart, honor on your heart. We will overcome. So, Just hang in there. Yeah, so, yeah. so, oh my goodness. You know, we could go yeah. on and on with this program, but I do want to take a moment. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you for all your wonderful contributions today, but I do want to take a moment to read some of what uh, our listeners have expressed. Not all of them, but uh, I want to read something. Vicky Nettles, this is for the young man. This is uh, for uh, 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 <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me let me get this name properly again because I don't want to mis misspell it. Yeah, Chikasielu. Somebody wrote something about you that I think you should know. Mom, ne ne make your. Uh, is she? Uh, can you hear me? Ne ne. She can, she, she, can Hello. she can hear me. I'm, I'm here. Hello? Aha. Okay. I want him mm -hmm. to hear some of what people have said about his participation today. Uh, this person said, thank you. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, let me see. Uh, there was a message here from... Oh, wait a minute. Now. I, I just had it up, but uh, just that quickly. <laughs> I like the one that says this kid, <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> uh, this one is, uh, I, I do want to read it to him because it's important that he knows that his presence today made that. Okay, this is from Vicky Nettles Jens, uh, Jenkins. Can you ask him to stand, sit up a little bit? I know he's tired, poor baby. Tell him to sit, sit up. He's done quite well for a two hour lecture. Chica, say hello. Can you stand up? <laughs> is, is this, did he fall asleep? <laughs> oh, uh, Vicky, Nettles, uh, Vicky Nettles uh, Jenkins said, this brings tears to my eyes. He is an amazing young man, as are his beautiful mom and dad. I wanted yes. you to share some of the nice things I was said about you. And then uh, this is from uh, Obi Onyoha. He says, he is a remarkable child. Indeed, he is. And uh, let's see, I just wanted to read uh, uh, one gentleman, Hukuna Child says, if we don't teach our children about African spirituality, the world will not teach them. And that is certainly what his parents are doing. Hukuna uh, uh, Child says, yes, yes, indeed. Yep, 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 yep. And he also says, Ezibonga. Very good. You see, we appreciate you being here today, and I appreciate all the words uh, that has come from the mouths of all these wonderful presenters today. Uh, thank you so much for all your wise words. I mean, mm -hmm. my spirits enriched today. Thank you, Dibia Chia Dozier. Uh, uh, what can I say? Thank you for your wonderful lecture, Dr. Simona Monet. Mm -hmm. How wonderful, how wonderful, how wonderful, as always. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful uh, 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 participant of this forum! Thank you, Charles. I'm just gonna go ahead and call out the names of uh, Akimi Bro, of course. Uh, and uh, uh let's see, uh, uh Nandu Simiri. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going out there. Adora uh, uh, let's see. Akachi. Akachi is here too. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Maurice Goki, I think. Akachi Azubuki, I think I've mentioned her. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, there, are, uh, there are some other people that I can't I can call everybody's name out. But those who are posted, I'm just calling out the names of those who actually posted. Not everybody who was in the program today. Thank you, Nandi. I want to point, I want to read this very quickly that Nandi Simiri wrote. Knowledge is merely a potential. Knowledge is not power. And that is quite frankly what a lot of us think we have. We got knowledge. Applied knowledge is power. 
The majority of us, unfortunately, and I, I, I think it's okay to read it. The majority of us, unfortunately, don't apply what we learn to a modern society and our specific societies, other than what I've seen who isn't doing within the spiritual religious pillar. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. It's very true. That knowledge that's not applied is not knowledge at all. You know. Uh, and then Akacha Azubike says, thank you for speaking. So you did this is referred to you. Thank you for speaking strongly for us in a world bearing down on women to make them not second class citizens, but fourth class citizens. I mean, when you take what's going on in, in the United States, it's just crazy. And uh, Akacha Azubike also says, thank you for pointing out the Bible fables and how they demonize women. We do that's attributed to you uh, very much so. And uh, uh, I can say thank you, thank you, and, 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 and I'm, I'm sure they all appreciate this program today. I certainly do appreciate the program today. <clears throat> I want to try, uh, thank uh, Akimi Bill for obviously continuously uh, providing us with uh, providing people with information mm -hmm. about our program, and I'm um, just I'm just going to put some of what he's got here. Check out the new and improved website. Uh, Doctor, well, well, okay, thank you very much, <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> And and he, he's reminding us to send your support to Cash App, Ugele, uh, a pound, a dollar, Ugele, or go to, well, it's written here, chism.org and donate to the Onyinye Project Building Fund. For those of you, for the young man, I think it's important that he understands that we're building uh, 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 the university. Well, the university has gotten, uh, uh, Chiz University, he could be a, 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 a he could be a future class, uh, a future student in your department. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. So, so we are. I mean, this has been a wonderful, wonderful show. Yes, seen here, we really enjoy you. And uh, to end the program, I would like to play the music that um, reminds you. It, uh, and one more thing: if you have not gone to Chism live on on uh youtube please go there and subscribe we need you to subscribe we want the numbers the numbers are climbing we're very proud of you thank you so much for subscribing mm -hmm. and following us on uh, youtube and uh so thank you what can else what can else can, what else can i say thank mm -hmm. you so much thank you uh, uh my darling little fella here oh he has this no thank you for being here Dibia, or Chaja, only Simona Money, the chair Mom, Mama, is can she hear me? Can she hear me? Is again? I didn't even ask you your name. Mama Chica, is that again? Oh, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. She's muted. <laughs> unmute yourself. Unmute. We can't hear you. Ah. Uh, I wanted her to have a. Uh, Their connection is not very good. Uh, yeah, I, I. She's muted. I told her to mute, unmute herself. Okay, she had. Now, is that one one getting? Right, we have just uh, just a few seconds. Is, is that again? Huh? Yeah, the connection is very very good. Mama Chica, is that one again? Okay, I don't think she's hearing me. Chica, is that again? Yeah, they're having difficulty. But anyway, thank you everyone. Thank you. And this person says, uh, uh. Akachi says, thank you, young brother. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And I thank everyone for being here. It's been such a wonderful program. And we, we, have, we have to do this again. We have to bring this little guy back again. We have to do this again. So, everyone. Huh? Thank you all for joining us.